Welcome to the debate for the opening on the Shawshank Tech School Committee. For the, this is for the uh, Town of Burlington's 2021 uh, town election coming up in April. We have two candidates running for it, uh, Christine Kim, an accountant and owner of a local business who has uh, children in, in both Shawshank Tech and in the Burlington High School. And Michael Kelly, a graduate of Shawshank Tech with experience in town meeting and with the Ditson Reuse Committee in Bill Ricca. Now, candidates, let me lay out the ground rules for you. We will start with one minute openings from each of you. We've had a, a random randomizer set the, the order here. And we will start with Mike, followed by Christine. And this will be the same order we use for the closing comments. And after the op your opening comments, we will switch to uh, questions from the, from the press. We have three, uh, three members of the press here with us. Uh, Rich Hosford from BCAT, Chris Huffaker from Patch, and Melissa Russell of Wicked Local. You'll have, candidates, you'll have 90 seconds to answer the questions from the press. Then you'll get the opportunity to ask each other a question. And you will have uh, 90 seconds to answer that. And then when we're through with that, we'll move on to, to the final piece of the, the action tonight, two minute closing from each of you. So with that, why don't we start with the, uh, the opening statements, starting with Mike. Uh, yes, uh, good evening. Uh, thank you uh, to um, to um, Big Cap for hosting. Thank you to uh, yourself, um, um, Mr. Bill Byer, for hosting this on on the last minute. I really appreciate it. Um, and also thank you to the residents of Burlington that are joining us this evening. Uh, my name is Michael Kelly, and I'm excited to announce my candidacy this year for Shawshank Tech. Committee to uh, represent the town of Burlington. I grew up in uh, Baraka and attended Baraka Public Schools. I attended and graduated Shawshank Tech. I am a proud graduate of the class of 2005. I also uh, studied metal fabrication. And while I was there, I received three citizenship awards in uh, history, metal fab, and math. I also received the highest rank of Eagle, the Boy Scouts of America in 2004. I have been involved in municipal government, serving on Burgess Town Meeting for three years. Thank you, Mike. Now, Christine, your opportunity. Hi. I am seeking or I'm running for Shashin because I wanted to give back to the community, which has meant so much to my daughter who attends Shashin. I love the teachers there and the leadership. I'm confident in knowing that children can graduate with, from Shashin with skills that help them build lives and a future, whether that future involves college or a straight career path, more choices equal more opportunities for our children. I have three children who have attended Burlington Public Schools. I know the concerns that my children have currently, but I also know the concerns as a parent knowing what's ahead of them. I have seen and felt the social, emotional, and academic impact over the last year firsthand not just for my children, but for the parents and the teachers at the school as well. My skill in education in accounting and finance balance the overall profile of the current school committee. 
and owning my own business, as well as head coaching sports showcases my ability to lead. And I would love to have your vote. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Now let's move over to, to questions from the, from the press. We'll start with uh, Richard Hosford and we'll let uh, Christine answer first and, and the Michael the second opportunity. All right, so obviously this has been quite the year, uh, very different learning experience for our students. So what I wanted to know from both of you is what lessons do you think were learned from you know, teaching during a pandemic? And if the right lessons weren't learned, what you know, should have been? So why don't we let uh, Christine answer first, followed by Michael. Thank you. So flexibility, I think, was learned this year. <laughs> Um, things will happen and you will have to adjust to those. Uh, being able to change things very quickly was very important. Um, and I think the schools did kind of a good job with that. Uh, I think on the side of the parents and the students and the teachers is that the school as a whole um, is very important and every component that goes into it, uh, it we, needs to be looked at always because they're interconnected to one another. Um, that's how I feel about that. But I think they did a pretty good job actually uh, considering what we had to go through. And um, I'm looking forward to be back though. <laughs> looking forward to that very much. And my kids are too. I think that um, they didn't realize before how much they really do enjoy school and uh, their teachers and that in-person learning. And I think they're looking forward to being back too. So thank you. Thank you, Christine. Okay, and Michael, your opportunity. Okay, well, um, we need someone who wants to get our, our children back in the classroom. Over the past one year of having either hybrid learning or the uh, remote concept, um, the children are regressing. And they may not be ready to graduate so we need to see if we can find and develop some sort of program, even after school activity or an evening program or something after they graduate to help them catch up. I, I feel that they need the extra help. I think they lost a lot this year. Thank you, Michael. We'll move on now to a question from uh, Melissa Russell of uh, Wicked Local. Thank you. Um, let's put ourselves, let's fast forward a year, let's say, post-pandemic world. Um, what should be the priorities of the board in your opinion? And what would you do to move the school in that direction? Let's uh, change the order of who goes first. We'll let uh, Michael do this one first, followed by Christine. So Michael, go ahead. Well, I feel, you know, there's a host of issues, and one of them is we need to figure out our superintendent situation. We have a superintendent right now that has a two-year contract with an option for a third year, and that is so much of an important part to Shawshank Tech, and we need someone that will be able to help bring Shawshank after the pandemic over the next couple of years to help keep with the direction that Shawshank has been going in. Thank you, Michael. Christine, your opportunity. I agree with Michael. Uh, we have to, we currently have a temporary superintendent and we need to hire a permanent one. And we'd like to have one that we have for quite a while. Uh, I would be looking for a um, superintendent that ha is approachable, 
has a vision and a plan that they want to uh, pursue, but has sensitivity to the issues that are in the schools at this time, um, that's realistic with their expectations, but also flexible, because if one thing we've learned this year is that you have to be flexible. Uh, collaborative with the teachers, the students, the parents is very important, and as well as having empathy and respect for each other, the students, the administration, the staff. I would say we need a superintendent that puts our students first, but doesn't forget the needs of the rest of the school. I think that the community that we have at Shasheen is one that is um, family oriented, uh, very collaborative and caring. And I would personally like to have in that position, a leader that exemplifies that because I feel like when you're a leader, it carries down throughout the, the administration from the top to bottom, right down to the staff. So, um, and budgeting, of course, because the pandemic will have an issue with that. My accounting skills will help with that, I think. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Now we'll ask for a, a question from Christopher Huffaker for uh, representing Patch. Thanks. Um, both of you in your uh, your questionnaires with the BCAT, you mentioned uh, budgeting and finances of the school. Um, so I, I guess I just want to ask, um, you know, for a little more uh, specificity on what your concerns are. So what, what are your what's your biggest concern about the school's current financial situation, and what would you do about it? Why don't we uh, flip the order again. We'll start with Christine. So thank you for that question. That's a great question, Chris. Um, what I would say about the budget is that each year the budget gets tighter and tighter. This year's budget will be even more tighter because of the pandemic. So I would really have preferred it to expand a little bit so we can get things going, but this is definitely not going to be the year for that. Um, I would say that the current superintendent wants to pursue some technology needs, so that's something we would look at. In past uh, school committees, as I've watched them, it has come up that possibly certain um, salaries don't measure up with the other salaries that the vocational schools have for their administrative staff and some teachers. That's something to look at. I think that um, I personally would like to see a bigger gym. Is that something that'll happen in the next three years? Probably not, but that would be a nice long-term goal in my opinion to have. Um, I think, of course, the technology piece is important and definitely important to our superintendent with good reason because computers are the future of all the everything. So um, I believe in that as well. But to make those things happen, you have to remove items from somewhere else. And that's always the tricky thing. Being able to see, um, to take into account the whole of the situation and still take care of the individual needs is gonna be important. I think as an accountant, um, I have that experience. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Michael, go ahead, please. Okay, well, I, you know, you know, the finances of Sashin is important. Um, the, the proposed fiscal 22 um, operating uh, budget um, seek to um, do away with the director of the guidance department and also allow the director of support services to now be in charge of all those departments at, at once, which is a savings to the district. Um, the new, um, the new created position 
would come with a twelve thousand uh, dollar department here and department chair statement for that new position. Thank you, Michael. Moving on with an, another question from the press, we'll give uh, Mr. Hosford an opportunity again. Thank you, Bill. Um, recently here in Burlington, the school committee went to town meeting and got funds for a director of equity, inclusion and diversity. And I was wondering what you think, uh, how you think Shashin's sort of administration handles situations like that when they come up and would you like to see a similar position created there? Would Michael start on this one? Um, would you be able to uh, repeat the question? Yeah, I'll try to make it a little bit more direct. So uh, Burlington Public Schools is, is set to hire a uh, director of equity and diversity and inclusion. And I was wondering, do you think Shashin needs something similar? I do not think Shashin needs something similar. I feel that, um, you know, the way it is right now, there's a, there's a, there's talk about them saying that the admissions policies that we have at Sarsene and other vote schools across Massachusetts isn't equal and fair. And, and unfortunately, in my opinion, it certainly is equal and fair because we accept everything. Mm, accepts everybody at the tech, but we have to be selective. You know, we have to have students accepted based on their grades, their discipline, and they also get recommendations from the guidance counselors and their teachers. And there's talks of them going to a lottery system, which I don't agree with. I don't agree that we should be forced to go to a lottery system. The system that we have at Shoshin works and it has been working. And I don't think Shoshin has, has the financial resources at this point to even be able to have that type of position. So I just feel that um, that position right now is uncalled for. Thank you, Michael. Christine, your response, please. Okay, so I've thought, I've thought about this um, because it is an important part of the discussions that have been going on over the past year or two. Um, in my uh, research, I found that in Burlington, Burlington High School has a 30% minority um, population of students where Shashin does not. Um, they have a very small outside of white and Hispanic students. The, the ratio is very small there. So I'm not sure that a full-time position would be warranted right now. But my concern though, in that regard is that why is it that the surrounding towns that send students to Shashin don't have the makeup that of the town? Why is Shashin less, have less minority students? So I think my thought is that we have to find out why that is. What is the barrier if there is one and how do we break through that barrier. We, we in Burlington don't really fulfill all of the seats that we could have at Shashin. And I'm thinking that the same barrier exists there as well. So that would be something I think we'd have to pursue. My thought was that um, the students know a lot about this and maybe those um, students at the high school have an idea of where that barrier is and how we can start to accomplish um, getting those students in the doors. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Now we'll 
give Melissa Russell a, another opportunity here, please. Thank you. Just a simple question, I think. Um, in your opinion, what is Shashin doing right? And what is it doing wrong? And how would you make changes should you be seated on the board? Let's start with Christine on this one. Having, having the shops that are needed in the workforce. Uh, what are they doing right? They have hired some really fantastic leadership. And I think the leadership contributes throughout the school. I think that the current superintendent um, has, he, he doesn't follow the surrounding towns. He makes his own decisions. I appreciate that. He's very approachable and I appreciate that as well. Um, I, I enjoy his use of social media. Not everyone does, so that could be a plus and a minus, but I appreciate the approachability of somebody who puts themselves out there. Um, as far as what we're missing, um, I tend to focus more on the positive than the negative. I definitely noticed the um, lack of AP classes. So I actually contacted the school about that and asked and found that we have uh, dual enrollment classes instead of the AP classes. And the kids can transfer that uh, easier to the state schools here in Burlington, uh, here in Massachusetts. So I appreciated that as well. Um, do we have some things to work on? Uh, sure, probably more um, student involvement. I would like to see more um, school spirit items, which sounds silly, but it's very important to high schools, high school kids um, to feel that community spirit. And it's that community spirit that helps to create the volunteers of the future. Um, but what they do do right is with their teachers. And I appreciate that. Um, I would like to see, like I said, the gym to be expanded and technology to be increased for our students. But on the whole, I think they do a pretty good job. We can always do better though. That's the goal. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. Now we'll go to, to Chris Huffaker for a final question from the press. Um, did Michael uh, I, get to answer that? I don't think he did. No. Oh, did I skip? Okay, yes. my apologies. It's okay. Go ahead, Michael. Um, you know, Shaw Sheen, you know, they do such a good job with meeting the needs of the shops and the academics to be able to prepare our students to enter the workforce into the 21st century. You know, Shaw Sheen has a very good reputation of, of not just, not just doing the required um, work, but they always exceed what's asked of them by the master founder of education. And Shaw Sheen, right now, as far as I can see, has a 95.3% achievement rate of students on IEPs, which right now, Shaw Sheen's enrollment encompasses 30% of our population this year of the 1,308 students are on IEPs and receiving services. And they do a great job of it. And, you know, it's a wonderful, it's a wonderful community. They, the best toward graduation rate is 95.3%. Of the kids that are on IEPs are able to graduate with not just a high school diploma, 
but a vocational certificate as well. And that's one, one of the things I want to continue. Thank you, Michael. Now, Chris, I'll give you an opportunity to ask a question. Hey, thank you, Bill. Um, well, the, uh, the press question started with uh, the coronavirus. I figure we could close with it also. Um, schools you know, across the state, including Shawshank Tech, are planning to bring students back uh, full time in the coming weeks and months. I was uh, wondering what your biggest concerns are about um, you know, with respect to reopening and uh, um, what, you, what you're looking to see from the school as that happens. Why don't we start with Michael on this one? Okay. Um, well, I know as of now that um, Saucine is, is right now on the hybrid model. And I know that beginning in May is when Saucine will return to 100% in person learning, which is what the kids need. They've lost way too much during this pandemic. And they've done what they can with the tools and the resources they had available to them at the time. And I just feel that, you know, it's a work in progress. That's what we do at Shawshank. It's always to be able to excel and to make sure the children are learning what they need to learn and to be able to be ready to graduate, which this pandemic has caused a lot of issues. And I honestly feel that Shashin could have brought the kids back in person sooner, but we can't wait any longer. Thank you, Michael. Christine, your chance. Thank you. So uh, I'm not sure that we could have gone to school much earlier, 100%, because the Department of Education decides that. But I am very excited, and I know my daughter is too, that she'll get to me in person, her academic teachers. I think that's the thing she's most excited about, because they've worked together, but never a lot she's never met in person. Being able to do her labs in the classroom for chemistry, she's super excited about. Um, I digress from the question, but I'm just super excited to have them back in school and having that social connection. I can tell you teenagers are not meant to be in the house with their parents for 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, I know she's super excited to be there, back with her friends, some sense of normalcy. I think that um, having that sense of, of sameness every day is just gonna be so much better for them emotionally. I think the emotional toll on all of the kids and the teachers is just beyond what they can, they could, they didn't, they, I know it's they have perseverance and they can get through anything, but it doesn't mean it was easy on them and it doesn't mean it was a good thing. So overall, I'm just looking forward to getting them back in the classroom, enjoying their friends, meeting their teachers, participating hands-on in their studies and their chemistry or physics or all of that. Anyway, thank you for the question. That was good. Thank you. Okay, that completes our questions from the press. Now we will give the candidates uh, an opportunity to ask each other a question. Why don't we start with Michael on this? Okay. Um, do you do you support a? Uh, in, in regards to the admissions, do you support going to a lottery system or to keep the selective system we have currently for admissions? That's a really great question. Um, and I think that is definitely the question of the hour. Um, 
So we don't in Burlington use all of our seats. So it really doesn't, it's really kind of a non-issue as far as us and Shasheen goes. But I would love to be at a point where we do have to deal with that question. I think that the reason why Shasheen has a 99% uh, graduation rate, which is higher than um, at the other surrounding schools, the reason why it's um, uh, kids who are on the IEPs, as you said, Mike, um, have remained in school and stayed uh, in school is because they chose and had to work hard to go to Shasheen. They know that it's a special place to be and they work hard to be there and to stay there. And I think that's the difference uh, between a lottery system and the system that we have currently. I know the system we have currently doesn't take into account um, you know, religion, race, sex or any of that um, and it's good to know that if someone comes from a long line of carpenters that they they the reason they don't get in won't be because of luck that they can't follow in their family's footsteps so i would say that i'm not for the lottery in this particular situation however that being said, that's how I feel currently. And I don't have the other side of the coin in someone else's position to know what the other side of the coin is for them, people who feel wronged by not having the lottery. So I'd like to hear their point of view too. Thanks. Thank you, Christine. Now, Christine will give you an opportunity to ask Michael a question. Uh, I was just wondering, I know you graduated from Shasheen, um, and I applaud your being here because this is a lot of work for a volunteer position, basically. Um, I was wondering what you've done for your school since your graduation um, at Shasheen, how you've interacted with Shasheen over the years, I should say. Thanks. Well, um, since graduating in 2005, um, I, like I said, I took the, uh, I, I, I was known in the, in the sheet metal shop. And um, although I'm not calling me doing that right now, um, I, I do stay in touch with a lot of people over at Shashin, and I've always felt that Shashin isn't just a high school, it's a community. It always has been a community to me. Um, I just, I, I want to be able to serve the town well, and I feel that, you know, by me attending Shashin and by me, um, being a part of that community is um, is uh, really important. Thank you, Michael. Okay, that brings us to the closing remarks by our two candidates and we will use the same order as we did for opening remarks which means Michael gets to go first and, and Kim will follow. So Michael, the floor is yours. Okay, um, I just want to say thank you to uh, Be Careful Who Students Debate. Uh, thank you to you, Mr. Bill Byer, for uh, uh, jumping in on such short notice. Um, my name's Mike Kelly, and I want to be your next Saucy Tech School Committee member to represent Burlington. I'm running because we need someone who understands the crucial role vocational schools play. As a social tech graduate, I understand that we need someone with municipal government experience 
which I have. We need someone who, who also understands the plight of a student on an IEP. We need to figure out our superintendent situation and find a permanent solution so that the school can make sure we meet the needs of a 21st century workforce. We need someone who wants to get our children back in the classroom. If this is the case, we may need to develop some type of after school evening programs or post secondary programs. We need to preserve our strong state educational standards for the 21st century. And to resist at all costs. The temptations to change this in the name of equity, we must be equal opportunity, but we must be selective as the marketplace indicates. I'm Mike Kelly, humbly ask for your vote when early voting starts on April 5th to April 9th, and also at the annual town election on April 10th between 8 a.m. and 8 p.m. I would like to be your next Shoshin Tech rep. Thank you. Thank you, Michael. Now, Christine, for your closing remarks. Thank you. Thank you, everyone, for having me. Thank you, Mike, for your um, question. I would like to say that um, I chose to run because I believe my skills in accounting and finance balance the overall profile of the current school committee, which includes many attorneys and teachers. I feel that my skills would help in budgeting and analytics and provide an additional perspective in that regard. I have three children who have attended Burlington Public Schools, a son that graduated in 2016, a son that's currently enrolled in Burlington High School, and a daughter that attends Shasheen. I'm a parent so that I know the concerns that my children have had for their education, but also my own perspective from being a parent and knowing what's ahead of them. I have seen and felt the social emotional impact of the last year and not just for my children, but for our parents and teachers as well. Having a son that graduated from BHS and a son currently attending there, as well as my daughter at Shasheen, I have a broad scope of understanding of what works, what doesn't, and what's possible. I'm a homeowner and a business owner here in Burlington, so I care about our town, our citizens, and our tax rates. I care about the students here in Burlington. I volunteered my time to youth sports and youth activities, and I have those children's futures in mind when I consider Shasheen in the direction I would like it to go. I have volunteered as a uh, as head coach with town sports, helped as team mom. I coached STEM groups that focus on leadership for children and teens. And I'm currently on the Burlington Performing Arts Parent Association Board and current treasurer. I have degrees in management and in accounting. I have experience participating in IEP meetings as a parent and have some understanding related to the needs of students that require more individualized education. More choices equal more opportunities for our Burlington children, and I would like to be a part of that future with Shashin School Committee. Thank you. Thank you, Christine. And that concludes our debate for the Shashin Tech School Committee opening. Uh, I'd like to thank the two candidates for their, their efforts tonight and the three members of the press who were here with some challenging questions. And I want to remember, remind everyone that, <coughs> excuse me, that we do have this election coming up uh, with uh, early voting starting soon. And if not, I want to see you there in the polls on April 10th. Thank you for your attention tonight.